Ooh, welcome back to the BDG Fantasy Football Channel. As always, I am joined with C.D. Lamb, and I am joined with Justin Herbstein at the end of the couch over there. Today's video is going to be the opposite of our last video, which we'll link down below. And we're going to be going round by round on 444's ADP, which takes a consensus across a bunch of the industry platforms, and choosing our absolute favorite pick in each round of fantasy drafts, each of us will take a round and kind of nominate a guy as we're going. And just a quick plug here, if you want way more in-depth breakdown like this and our entire all-fade list, must-draft list, all our ranking, stuff like that, that is available in the draft guide right now. Pre-order pricing discounted all the way up until August 1st, but the least expensive way to get it is by going to underdogfantasy.com or downloading the app using code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more. Not only are they going to hit you with a deposit bonus, but you're going to get the draft guide full free. First-time depositors and also just a caveat, if you have used our code this year already, April 15th or later, you will also retroactively get access to the draft guide for free as well. So don't think I forgot about y'all for supporting us this year. All right? Mm. Are we done? Ready. Are we done? If you're ready, then rip. Who's got who's got round two? We're going to skip round one because everyone loves everyone in round one. Obviously, they're all really Imagine good not picks. being ready. You know who it is. Here's the thing. The, the ADPs on these guys, I would definitely say Garrett Wilson, but it'd probably get people big mad. Oh, he's a first-round pick. So I'm going to just go one pick later. Saquon Barkley. And I, I don't know what people's view on him for redraft is. Um, I'm more bullish than probably a lot of people. And I know that there's like the uh, sediment out there that maybe he's not quite the same quads as back in the day. He's maybe lost a step as far as long speed. People be saying that? I mean, I don't know who specifically. We'll just, no, sound like a real smart guy. Sound like a, someone I with, actually said with people, a very big brain. Yeah, well, there's, there's a few people that have the same narrative, but I've heard it one place in particular. Mm. I'm here to let you know that while that's, you could argue that, Saquon is one of the backs last year that was in that 80% snap share range, and he's a guy that I think the way they paid him went out to get him as soon as they, they're like, listen, in division, we saw what this guy is. I feel like in this offense, this is going to be the best offense he's been a part of by leaps and bounds. And a guy that's on the field as often as he is, I'm not going to say we see rookie Saquon because that was cheat code running back. Right. Like, But you don't, you don't need that. You give me a similar season to last year when the Giants offense was somewhat solid. He gives you 1,300 on the ground. Like, this is a guy that I think could end up being, I'm not going to say a great, like, it's a second round pick. It's not like you're getting, you know, huge value return, but I think he could end up being a, a one of the best, if not the best finishers at the running back position this year. Dude, the more, the more drafts I do on underdog and just the more research I do for drafts in general, it feels like the second round is just fucked. I don't. I don't like the second round at all. I don't. Unless I have a back end pick, like I love being able to go. That, that was the thing about it, though. Like, so quads and Garrett Wilson are very much the top of round two. I don't love anyone in the batter, back part of yeah, round two. It, it's 100%. like it, they all feel a part of the same tier, where it's like you can get Marv or Olave up there, at like pick fourteen, fifteen. You're getting such similar players with like Nico, Mike Evans, Brandon Ayuk, all the way down at the end of second, early third. Where I'm like, man, if you can score the 101 to the 104, grab C Max, CD Lamb, Tyree Kill, and then also just get the bottom of that tier, I feel so much better rather than having to reach for the top of the tier. So, like, I don't really have a problem with the Saquon pick here just because more so, I guess, lack of options in my opinion. But mm -hmm. I feel like the red flags are kind of there. I do believe that Saquon's not the same explosive player that he was when he came in the league we made a little side bet yesterday I don't I don't think we, we never put any stakes on it but I, I, well, let's 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 have it now I don't think just you, don't try to put I, a fucking sign on my head no, <laughs> I, I I don't think Saquon's gonna uh I don't think Saquon will have one play of 60 plus yards from scrimmage this year not one not one he didn't last year I don't think actually he didn't but he basically every other year had multiple because he ain't the same guy. Man, you really. So what's the stakes? I mean, you, that's also, you were adamant. That's also, that's also kind of like a crazy. He's got to have a sixty-yard play. You were very adamant about it yesterday. No, I'm. I'm, I'm the still. The Eagles are a good offense. I'm still going to bet on this, but I'm just making. I'm just making the audience aware. He's that hedging his. You're, you're, right. you're, you're, he wants like no, plus no, no. two fifty. No, I don't yeah. actually. I'm making the audience aware that Nick's so out there. Like he's going on a limb. He's not going to have a sixty-yard run like most players in the NFL. Will play have. just a play from scrimmage. <laughs> Okay, I'm just making a point. Can we hedge? This I mean, if he's 50. as good as you say he is, and he was like he was one of the most explosive backs in the NFL, I'm just saying I don't think Saquon had like he would do that routinely every single year. Well, I just don't think nobody he has it does anymore. it routinely. He literally did for four years. He didn't do it routinely. You go back and look, he had like four or five plays like that. Right? That's he was, not routinely. Well, technically, mm. Devon Achan did it routinely last year. That would be one guy. <laughs> now, I mean, granted, he JT also was doing it. Time. 
I feel like pretty uh, pretty often when he was in his peak as well. Saquon will rip off big plays all I, the time. I'm, I'm going to take the, the he's going to have one of those plays for sure. Okay. I'll take you up on that. What's the what's the stakes? A monster energy drink. <laughs> nah, don't even. Don't be. You're going to be more of a woat than you already are. <laughs> this man told me he don't take the one in the we'll fridge. Go, we'll go Jersey of choice. Ooh, Jersey of choice, and no DHK, real joint. Yeah, NFL.com, baby. Oh, fanatics, the woat, the actual. Woke. I'd rather go DHK than you, fanatics. So yeah. So I'm. I mean. How do you feel about buying a Kelly Green Saquon jersey? Uh, it's it's a it's a good look. Dub. It's a great look. Uh, Saquon, yeah. Th- um, I guess my my only argument against it would be like I don't think he's the same player. Like Jason Kelsey is their best run blocking player and has been for quite a while. He's gone. You know the mobile quarterback. Obviously the tush push can take touchdowns. He doesn't really pass his running back. So I think there are uh, more ceiling options around him. But I do think the floor is incredibly high. So, like, you get him in the second round, I'm fucking fine with yeah. it. I, I, I know, think the only I thing that worries me about him is just is he, is he going to stay – if he stays healthy, I think he's going to smash. But yeah. that's been a problem, too, before. I know you didn't – you said you would take Garrett Wilson. He's the pick that I would take. I wouldn't have – Yeah, I, I, the reason I <laughs> – you didn't. You don't need me to yap about it, I don't feel yeah. like. And it also – I saw too many of these – if you look across that, the reason I didn't make him, underdog 11, FFPC, and BB10s all have him as a first-round pick, so yep. I'm like, yeah, it doesn't actually make sense to me. Yeah. All right, yeah. let's move to the third round, which I have. And Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, I wanted to pick the – actually, we've talked a lot about both these players. I, I have another running back here, which is why I kind of want to stack wide receivers early because I like the running back value in the third round, specifically Isaiah Pacheco mm. here at the 304. And, you know, we've I think we've all been kind of on, on the same point with Pacheco where he's the lead dog in – one of the best offenses, if not the best offense, behind one of the best offensive lines. He is the goal line back. He is, without Jarek McKinnon on the field, the pass catching back. I was looking at numbers in the games that McKinnon missed, and Pacheco played like 68% of snaps in the two- and four-minute drills, which was like fourth highest in the NFL over yeah. that span. So I don't necessarily know that going into this year, if we have a fresh Clyde edwards Hilaire, that he doesn't actually have a role there. I think Clyde will actually play a little bit more than most people are anticipating, but he's going to be – much more of a breather back where I think Pacheco will be able to uh, get as many opportunities as the man can handle. And he was on pace last year to score like 14, 15 touchdowns from scrimmage. I think, I think in this offense, like most running backs will be able to do that. And then you add in uh, a guy that I think is definitely above average back. And we've seen dudes over the years, like the, the Zeke's and, and players of that caliber, James Conner, even like Carlos Hyde in the San Francisco days, they're not pass catching backs, but they kind of back their way into 60, 70 catch seasons. And I think that's within the range of outcomes for Pacheco. So his touch on upside, his opportunity upside, his pass catching prowess, uh, I think leads me that, to like loving him in the third round. That that part is, I think, the biggest part, takeaway. Oh, well, I'm, 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 I'm uncomfortably high on Pacheco now. Yeah. But the, the potential upside of Mahomes just also loves to, as he's making a play, trying to make a play happen, all of a sudden Pacheco's there. Whoever that receiving back is you look like some of these games towards the end of the game uh, end of the year he had four six seven catches on seven targets like if those if that type of reception total is there on a weekly somewhat weekly basis like his opportunities down the stretch were like legit like top three top five at the running back position he, he could be in a situation to to be like it's gonna sound crazy but a top five back this year man yeah dude i, I think the upside is there and they they did nothing this offseason to address the running back position which is what makes me confident like they could have brought in a, a devin singletary they could have brought in like one of those caliber of backs you know and like and made things a little bit more murky for pacheco and i'd be way less bullish on him but the fact that it's just him and, and Clyde back there, Clyde will take a little bit of pass catching work for sure. That's probably what he does best. But Pacheco's upside in every other part of the game, I feel like, is well well uh, worth the draft cap here. Yep. Hi. No uh, arguments there. I think A-Chan would be mine, though. Yeah, he's Same. I would go back and forth between the two. I think if I had to split the difference, I would take one of them yeah. in one league, one in the other. A-Chan's upside is like the RB1. Legendary. Unmatched. Yeah. All right. Well, here in, what are we, round four here? Round four. It's um, on you. I'm actually going to keep. Going back to that running back, well, like you, Nick, I, going in wide receiver early and grabbing the value on these running backs is what I like to do. And there's a guy mm-hmm. that I'm higher on, I think, than most here on the couch and on the chairs today, and that's going to be Joe Mixon uh, for the Houston Texans. I mm, your guy have him coming off the or he's coming off the board right now, RB15. I have him as RB13 in my rankings, actually, uh, just behind Isaiah Pacheco, who we talked about around earlier. I think this is a guy that is going in. To a situation here in Houston where they're probably going to be one of, if not 
the best offense in football this year. There's going to be a ton of volume for Joe Mixon. There's really nobody behind him. Sorry if you like Damian Pierce. You probably shouldn't. Because actually, I think I made this comp in one of my videos where it was like Clyde to Pacheco is actually just Damian Pierce to Joe Mixon, where it's like they're the backup, but only because they're just there. Yeah, exactly. Like there's there's dead bodies behind Joe Mixon nice. here. Like there's nothing of relevancy. And then you also have the fact that whether or not you like him and whether or not you think he's been efficient or whatever, the Cincinnati Bengals did not move on from Joe Mixon because of a lack of talent. They moved on from him because it was a financial business decision for their roster. They have to pay Jamar Chase. They have to pay T. Higgins. Now he goes here. I think the opportunity is going to be just as high. He's coming off of four straight RB1 performances uh, four years in a row. Just Give me the value on Joe Mixon right here. I think this is a guy who can be an RB1 this year. I don't hate it. I, I, I feel like there's this is a pretty good round. Just I like love this round. A lot of good players. Like I, I think you can make the argument for Cup, for Lamar, even for the running backs around Mixon. Cook, White, uh, Devontae, I feel like you're getting out of nice value. Andrews. I want to be at the end of that tight end tier. So like, Andrews McBride. Like, yeah, McBride as tight end four. I think I like don't round four it. more than round two. <laughs> ESPN is like just throwing me off on all these rankings. 62 on underdog for Joe Mixon, 26 well, on ESPN. I mean, most like you do a draft with your college or, run, or high school homies, like running backs go, running backs are the first players off the board. So that, like, that makes a lot of sense. Isaiah to me. Pacheco, it's like going in the time machine. Pick. And I feel like, dude, I, I, I mean, I feel like that's more realistic than what you'll get out of best ball drafts. Like when you're in it, when you're in a draft with like your friends, they're, they're drafting dudes like Rashad White. And Isaiah Pacheco super early because they're like, I had Rashad White last year and he fucking put up, you know, uh, 10 touchdowns and had 400 fucking touches and, and all that that's, kind of stuff. So I don't really argue against that ADP. They're that's true. Cones. I mean, that's what they are. Nah, every, they might be the true. Oh, every, I think the best ball people are cones. Every time there's a chance to talk about <laughs> Joe Mixon, we have someone talking about him. So that's Thanks. facts. All right. Round fizz off. Joe Mixon stand, baby. I would don't. Dang. Joe Mixon stand. I think it's just you, Adam. Yeah, I'm just trying to get. That out of my head. He's trying Joe to yeah. Mixon stand. He's That's disgusted crazy. by me. Like let's uh, Mason. let's go ahead though. Can Listen, I take, can I take a guess? You you can. Who, who who would you guess? So if I looked at the teams, I see one team labeled C L E. What's that? And then next to him, I think he, cleavage. It's the Tim Couch jersey. It is. Amari Pooper. Out Don't of say the car is topless. Say the titties is out. Mm, Amari. Oh. Yeah. Well, it is Amari. L- listen, the Browns. <laughs> I want you guys to let me have something. Okay. The Browns, the AFC North. I'm going to give you guys some fun facts about this. This should have been fun as fuck. The so Oilers fun. have not been in existence since 1996. Reach. Oh. The Jaguars were an expansion team in 1995. Talk that talk. Both of those teams are not even in the AFC North. Go off. Have two AFC North titles more recent than my Cleveland Browns. Let's go, big girl. 1989, the last time they won the division, fam. Cleveland? I was Yes. Oh, my God. Family, this is what this is what we have over were, the, the mistake on the lake. Okay, you were in college. You won't. I was one years old in one <laughs> the, I'm about to drop. A, I'm about to make one of these boards come on this man's head. And Amari Cooper is going to break all of your skulls this year. It's the one thing we have going for us. Amari Cooper, I think, is actually. I don't really know what it is. If it's because he only had that one game with Flacco, and Flacco's not there. If it's Watson, if he's just not a cool player anymore. I don't understand how he's not being drafted as a wide receiver too. Like honestly, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of crazy. I, it's how absolutely far he's ridiculous. Twenty seven. I'm super on board with him at this price for sure. Dude, like I, I'm looking at T Higgins, who we'll talk about a little later on today. But you're telling me that T Higgins and without Jamar Chase having something happen to him or him going to a new team has anywhere near the upside that Cooper has? Like I like T Higgins too, but I just I just don't understand it, man. I really don't. This round sucks. This, I round's hate this, the, round. this round might this be round's the, the greatest. All you got to do is take Amari. <laughs> you are goaded. There's like, that's, there's that's like a fact. two guys in this entire round that I even who's like. the who's the second? I I could borderline take Amari or Alvin Kamara. You could borderline take Amari Cooper. Damn. You uh you so so far you just have fucking eight running backs on your roster. Dude. I think I just want to take like three wide receivers early and then just hammer the running back position for like three rounds. Man's playing in an all flex league. I do like the uh, Kamara's do, that, Kamara's not a bad call there though. No, he's not. The situation still feels weird, but I feel like it's not that weird, actually. It's pretty yeah. pretty. pretty cut it's pretty easy to me. He's just going to get a ton of pass catching. I could maybe get work. behind a breakout from Pickens as what, well. Is there – okay, I was just going to ask, though. Like, do you guys disagree with Amari Cooper? And if so, is there anyone that even makes you think about it? Is it – you were going to say Pickens? Pickens, Kamara, and, and Cooper. If yeah. you're in a draft right now and all three of those guys are on the board, who are you taking? Cooper is the pick for me, for sure. Cooper, I would say, is my pick as well. I guess if I went wide receiver early, then I'm going Kamara, though. Devastating knee injury to Nick Chubb. Just let us have Amari. 
next. <laughs> I unfortunately had to talk in detail about Watson the other day. Oh, and no, don't. Do it, it was bad, but I, I supported him for that's once. Not, that's very you nice supported him? Oh, man. For once. Man. I, I talked positively about him for once. All right, let's th- let's talk positively about someone else not named Deshaun Watson. Uh, we go into the sixth round. There's <laughs> there are a lot of players I like. I've talked a lot about Christian Kirk in recent videos. He's also also all the way up there at six oh one, so it feels a little cheating. But I'm gonna keep falling back on. Uh, this is a David Montgomery pick <laughs> on Dak Prescott. Okay, no, no, no. Dak. Dak. This is probably where I'm looking for my QB. I think mm-hmm. Dak is about as safe of it come as it comes at the position. He's been borderline a top five fantasy QB in like four of the last five years. He has a solidified uh, wide receiver one. And, you know, we talk a lot about after the bye last year, what CD's numbers were. But if you put the splits as, uh, yeah, post week seven, so like the last 10, 11 games of the season. Quarterback one. Dak was QB one in points per game. Yeah. And I don't see a reason why they would switch up what they're doing coming into this year, looking at their personnel of just Zeke and Rico Dowdle in the backfield. Mm -hmm. So... Dak, I feel like, has as high of a, a ceiling as almost anybody in the NFL this year, at least from a passing perspective. Uh, his floor is insane, I think, and I think uh, you'd have to talk me out of him being a top-five QB when all is said and done at the end of this year. So the floor is there for me. The offense is there for me. The system's there for me. Dak has just been phenomenal as a floor play uh, year in and year out. So I haven't heard a good argument about why he's not Going higher in drafts. Gun to my head or BDG board on my head, it would be Dak Prescott over CJ Stroud for me. Like if you told me those are the two options that I'm at cost, yes, or same cost. No, it, on there are the two quarterbacks in my queue. I'm taking Dak ahead of CJ Stroud. I think right now we're projecting a lot for CJ Stroud, and I'm not saying that he can't be great, but CJ is going to be very good. The only, I think, the only way that Dak doesn't end up having a top five type fantasy season this year is if there's an injury to CD Lamb. His numbers on. Uh, uh, underdog, 32 and a half passing touchdowns. That is his line. And I want to say that is... That would have led the NFL last year. Would have led the NFL-ish last year. And I want to say that's the highest line this year. There might be one quarterback that's higher. I can't find it in the list right now. But he's projected to have arguably the best statistical season of any quarterback, at least through the passing game. And also, he hasn't been scoring a ton of rushing touchdowns recently. But if you remember, the first three seasons he was in the NFL, he scored six rushing touchdowns Mm -hmm. apiece. If he randomly kind of throws that in on the one-yard line rather than giving it to, like, Tony Pollard from last year, his fantasy upside could really, you know, it it could really be there. So Dak's the easy pick for me in the sixth round. Preach. I like Dak. I like Kyler in this round, too. Both those quarterbacks. Well, Uh, Yeah, Kyler actually is a a guy I also stand for. Okay, so my pick here, and I just talked about Kyler Murray, but let's talk about his teammate James Conner for the Arizona Cardinals. This is my favorite pick by far in this round, and I recently just did a video where I talked about James Conner potentially being the single best value in all of drafts so far this year. Um, I currently have Conner as my... RB18 in my rankings, we're getting him here as the RB23. I kind of have him in the same tier as the David Montgomery types. This is a guy who gets an improved offense this year. He was hyper-efficient last year when he was given the touches. I understand they've drafted uh, Trey Benson. People are going to be excited about that in Dynasty communities, but I think this year with uh, James Conner still under contract, Benson's probably going to just be a complimentary piece at best. I don't really expect him to eat a ton into the workload. With the improved offense, there should be more touchdown opportunities, just a better offense as well. I'm very high on James Conner. I think he has pass catching upside. I think he has all of the tools that we want. And when I'm looking at Najee, Conner, Swift, Brooks, Mostert, all of these running backs, it's far and away James Conner for me. By, by leaps and bounds ahead of Najee too? Yeah, man, I, okay. I, I'm I'm out on a limb on Connor. I know I know I'm the only one out on a limb on Connor in this. You don't have group. you have Josh Jacobs higher than Connor in your rankings. Yes, but I I am flag planning James Connor right now as one of my guys right now this, this year. Yeah, Connor. I mean, I, I've faded Connor every single year. I don't think I've ever drafted him, and I've been wrong pretty much every single year. <laughs> This, this just feels like the first year where there's a reasonable argument you can make as to why he might not be as good in fantasy. And it's it's because of Trey Benton. The same shit that we were saying with Josh Jacobs is like they drafted Marshawn Lloyd. We're just saying like, oh, we expect him to eat into the workload. I think the same could be true. And Connor, it's like if the fall off happens, it likely happens over the second half of the year. And that's kind of detrimental to your fantasy team if you don't have Benson. Yeah, I listened to what Jonathan Gannon was saying the other day about uh, James Conner, and they asked him kind of about, like, the Benson pick and James Conner's age and kind of being worried about a running back age cliff. And I know it's coach speak, so you take it with a grain of salt, but Gannon was like, we are not worried about that at all. We are planning on running James Conner. Okay. Which 
I think the range of outcomes for him are pretty wide. So I definitely understand being bullish on him. I, I guess my concern is this is a guy that we kind of forget has had some injury history. And if they do actually ride him, right, now it's like, all right, what if midway through the season – He's starting to wear down, and then you got a really fresh Trey Benson. That's yeah. that's kind of the my one, concern. The one issue is that is like Connor never plays a full season, and it's usually okay because whoever's in the backfield is behind him is Cullen? never going to take his job. And they just keep putting him out there. But if Benson, yeah, if Benson pops off for like 130 from scrimmage, really, you know, some real impressive shit, then he might have a problem. Fair I, enough, and that's a valid worry. But I would argue that like, but the, the cost here, the Najee, is, is the Swift, the Brooks, the Moster, all those guys have injury concerns as well. All of those guys kind of have risk. Uh, mm-hmm. as well and so I'll just take James Conner here man I, I just how do, I feel how do you so rank, bullish on him how do you rank these running backs in this round just straight up and redraft okay so in round seven I would take Mostert ahead of James Conner um, you have Najee the highest right yes I have Najee the highest then I would go Swift then I would go Mostert I would take Conner for sure ahead of Brooks I'm not like out on him for the record but these are fourth ranked in this round though correct yes the other thing too that kind of concerns me is you look at his seasons over the last four he only ran for like 700 yards th- the previous three seasons, and last year he ran for just over a thousand. I think if e- he, he's someone that if everything continues to break right for him throughout the year, he could end up being great. Like he's going to be in a situation to if he's getting 15, 20 touches in that offense, that's going to probably be better with Marv. I get it. I'm kind of worried about that uh, that young back and in, in waiting. That's I just my biggest kind of ra- randomly had just like. Sh- such an uh, efficient season last year. He yeah, did. He had he, five yards per carry. He did. Yeah, he, he was. was like, all of his metrics were fucking phenomenal, but that was, yeah, it feels like he's never really there and it just randomly happened. But, but here's the thing is like, he was very efficient and it was a bad offense with no Kyler yeah. Murray and no true wide receiver one on this offense. Like Hollywood Brown was hurt a majority of the year. Trey McBride didn't break out until the back half. Like teams were dialing in on the run because they had Josh Dobbs under center and it was just James Conner and he was still... Top 10 in uh, true yards per carry, juke rate, evaded tackles, breakaway run rate, breakaway runs. Like, he was a very, very efficient, very good running back, and he was very productive. And I understand that there's maybe a, a dip in some opportunity because his opportunity was also top 10. He had a top 10 opportunity share. But this is just a guy that can... I would not be surprised if he's a double-digit touchdown scorer. I would not be surprised if he's running for 1,000 yards this year, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's seeing a ton of receiving work as well with Kyler Murray under center. Like, this is, I guess, the way that I'm... Uh, where where I have him, I'm more conservative. I, I actually think that you bring up great points. But I just look at, like, last year, came cute. out of the gates really well, and then she, got hurt. Got she kiss. Smoochy. But I'm about to bury you. Because <laughs> then, he, what what happens if he gets hurt like last year? If he misses four weeks and Trey Benson starts playing really well? That's, that's like, I feel like that's, there's a range of outcomes where James Conner weekly either gets hurt or doesn't look good, and then all of a sudden Trey Benson starts eating into the workload. That's that's why I'm more conservative, but I definitely see with the, I, the I, high upside he has. I get that argument. I am not drafting my teams trying to project injury. I am also not worried about at a, what is this, the seventh round, eighth round? I'm not worried in the seventh round at this cost because I'm taking Conner as the RB23 off the board. He's probably my rb Three on my roster at this point, to be honest. I mean, gotcha. the way well, been, I would, I would the way say picking players is your RB six, dude. <laughs> so, the only so the only thing guy. the only thing consistent about James Conner is injury. He will miss time throughout every one of his years he's ever played. Yeah. So I don't. So, I don't. I don't predict injuries. So do eighty percent of running backs that play. Exactly. But I feel like Trey Benson in the backfield actually is more problematic for him missing time than it most people's uh, per, most people's uh, backfield. It could be. But, but, I mean, I, I, I'm i not saying that you can't have him there. I just – that's why I'm conservative. It's also not like – and, again, I, I, I understand I'm out on a limb on Connor here, and, and being out on a limb means that I deserve some pushback here as well. But it's not like Trey Benson was a perfect prospect either. Like, Nick, you highlighted a lot of the flaws that he had on our Dynasty channel. And so would you be surprised if Benson comes in and he looks mediocre? No. Literally no. nothing would surprise me in fantasy football. Yeah, uh, no, like for James Conner. That's why I said I think the range back. of outcomes are, are wide. I, I could see him being a top five back this year. Yeah. Give me all the James Conner, man. All right. Eighth round. Give you all of who. All right. Whomst. Eighth all round. Me. So this one to me is where if I have not taken a quarterback, I'm looking for some upside. And I think it doesn't come without its risks. But at quarterback 12, the 8-12 in this round, I'm going to take my swing on Jaden Daniels, number two overall pick. Mm. All right, Dan. Guy that has solid weapons. I'm not going to say it's anything crazy, but he, he can do – a lot more, I think, than people probably realize in the passing game. I know he had great weapons in LSU, but that plus the rushing floor that he possesses, I feel like it's worth taking a shot on in the eighth round because 
when you start looking down the list at the quarterbacks after him, like the, I feel like this is kind of your last shot of like home run swing at the QB position. Yeah, personally. elite rushing upside. And obviously, like it, it comes with the guy that he runs pretty upright. I could see where he gets banged up or has a hard time making Gosh. the transition to the NFL, but <laughs> I'm willing to take a shot in the eighth round here. I don't mind it. I actually am going to bring Daniels up in a later video. I don't know when it's posted on this channel, but I don't mind it. So who's your, who's your pick then? Honestly, none of them. Can I trade out of this round? No, you have to pick one. I guess it's Jay them, Daniels. Them the rules. Okay. So but, you don't, you don't mind it, but that's your pick. Honestly, I can't Dub. <sighs> just say it then. Give me, give me your real pick. No, I'm telling you, this is how I feel about the round. You're okay, seeing it in gross. live, yeah. live time. No, it's, it's I guess Jake Ferguson is probably if I'm punting the I tight knew end. I had to. I knew I had yeah, to sneak scroll that up. In there for you. Maybe Christian Watson. Maybe. Um, it's, a, it's a tough round, but for sure. I'll be honest. I'm probably not drafting a lot of Jaden Daniels this year. Yeah, I'm not either. Not. <sighs> so then, who's your guys picking this round? I I just named the two that maybe would go. I see the upside in Daniels, but I can't confidently pick him. Uh, QB twelve. I have to take him as my QB one. Well, I mean, we're only drafting hopefully one in one QB, right? Yeah, I probably go. I don't normally draft two anyway. Fergie or Seawatt also. Jaden, yeah, I mean, my, my, my concerns with Jaden have kind of been voiced. I just, I think the supporting cast is actually kind of terrible behind Terry. Like, I don't yeah. think there's much padding there for him. I think the offensive line lets up a fuckload of sacks. Yeah. I think he'll be that, under that, pressure. That is concerning. It's kind of like a mental, it's, it's almost like I could see him going down at, he could just have a very tough rookie year, you know, where it's like his weapons aren't making a lot of plays for him. He's under pressure like 90% of the time where, yeah, it, it could definitely lead to like rushing numbers and rushing stats, but mm-hmm. I can kind of see it bottoming out and it just becoming like a shithole of a year where we're just like, all right, let's get to next year so that yeah. we can like build around I was going to say this, this route could go very Justin Fields-ish where like he's putting up fantasy numbers, but it looks so bad on the field. Yeah. All right, let's move to round nine. This was another tough round I felt like where – I didn't have anyone that really stood out stood out tremendously to me. Trey um, Benson's right there. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't really want to draft Trey Benson, uh, although he does kind of make me nervous for James Conner. I like Tajay Spears a lot because he's cheaper than Tony Pollard, and I feel like at this point he might just be the more efficient back as work his way into a, a bigger workload. Yeah, I actually uh, surprisingly because I've never really talked about this player. I think my favorite player in this round. Might be Jackson Smith and Jim. It bro. is. Let's go. Hey. Yes, in the ninth round, because yes, I'm so sir. used to, like, you see his ADP on underdog 76, which is like 50 fucking spots higher than Tyler Lockett, which I feel like is kind insane. But in normal leagues, you see him outside of pick 100, ESPN, FFPC, Yahoo. And I'm like, the more I, I look at this offense, the more I look at, I guess, what JSN did last year, the small amount of, like, you know, under the hood type of metrics that he showed us. I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to bank on a guy that was a, a really good prospect on a team now that's probably going to have him on the field for seventy percent of uh, the routes. That's going to be relatively pass heavy. That I think should have a little bit of a bounce back this year. Uh, this is listen. You're you're taking shots on hopefully guys with high upside. If you want to go Trey Benson, of course he's got that upside second half of the year. You want to go Brian Thomas Jr. He's got upside on a play to play basis. So I'll I'll take. Jackson Smith and Jigba if I'm if I'm swinging for a home run or upside here. No, I, I'm willing to fuck around and find out in, at the ninth round here. I, I feel like he was the guy in the ninth round that really jumped off the page to me. Trey Benson, I think I made all those counterpoints to, to Connor, but I also don't feel strong enough to draft Trey Benson as almost – one of the top 32 running backs in the NFL here. No, thank you. Yeah, because there's a chance that you can't, like, Trey Benson is unusable for you for a half of the season at least. And, and yeah, and the way that rosters work, like, if I'm in most leagues, I'm going to end up wanting to drop him yeah. on a weekly basis, and right. I don't want to take that in the ninth round. 100%, because you have other guys, like, you know Zeke's going to get work out the gate. You know Jerome Ford's going to get Blake work out Corum. the gate. Yeah, I don't know about all that, but mm-hmm. a lot of these guys going under him are going to get work out the gate. Right, so it's like when you have Trey Benson, it's a good point because redraft, you got five or six bench spots. You know, you're the beginning of the season is so important because you're getting all this fucking new information that we didn't have all summer. So you're looking to recycle your team very quickly. Right, it becomes a mental game. It's like how long can I hold on to Trey Benson for? You're never gonna be able to choose if James Conner or when James Conner gets hurt. So it feels like you might just sit on your bench for a minute for too long. For too long. Let's move to Walk Connors Eaton round ten because we've talked about JSN for too long. Round. You Ten can't talk final round of this vid. Too long. I'm wearing his jersey, Justin Herbert. I know yeah. in our On do not draft. Nick said that he would not draft any Chargers not named like Lad McConkey or Josh Palmer. <laughs> I think at this point, give me Justin Herbert, man. If if you are punting your quarterback position, you are not going to find a quarterback with the talent that Justin Herbert has. And I get it. This is probably going to have a lot of projection in this take, but you have 
a new offense with Jim Harbaugh, Greg Roman. We're expecting a lot of runs. Even though it's probably going to be some of the lowest passing attempts we've seen out of Justin Herbert, he has never, ever in his career finished outside of the top 15 in fantasy points per game, and he's being drafted outside of that. And also, even though it sounds fun to say we're going to establish the run, when you're going into the year with Kamani Vidal, Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, it's going to be kind of hard to establish the run when you got a bunch of bums playing the running back position. Also, they play in a division with the Kansas City Chiefs. We don't expect this to be a good fan, uh, football team in general. They're probably going to be playing from behind. So as much as you want to run, you can't run while you're behind in games. So Harbaugh can. I do think Harbaugh can do. it and, worked when you're will. in Michigan and you're winning by 40 every single week. He didn't win for a long time in Michigan, and they ran that thing. It was crazy. But As an Ohio State fan. I just think that we are drafting Justin Herbert almost at his floor right here. And if he has any type of – any type of relevancy this year, I think you're going to get a value in a guy like Justin Herbert. My, my I, biggest thing is the combination of the the play scheming that's probably going to happen with when I look at comparing like apples and oranges the years prior, it's like, okay, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler. I, I don't even know who their wide receiver one is. Like if is lad going to be really is. good out of the box? Like, it, I mean, I think he's talented. Are I, they going to like, have a receiver that goes over 800? 50 yards this year? Yeah, his name's Lad McConkey. How, how many more yards are you going to have? I don't know, but... I don't feel confident. Like, I, I wouldn't... I don't know that I put money that they have a 900-yard receiver on the roster. And if that's the case, I'm, I'm a little nervous I about just, that. And I also, like, let's look at this round as a whole. Mm-hmm. You have guys like Zeke, Corum, Edwards, Goddard, Nick Chubb. Like, all of these guys. Do any of those guys even excite you a little bit? No, uh, to me they don't. Well, and my so thing I'd is, I'd rather take my shot on my QB here. My my Let's biggest see. thing is is actually more to the quarterback position. Nice. Like, what about Herbert? Other than like, I do I don't disagree that he's a really talented player. But what about his situation to him this season? Do you feel more confident that he's going to outscore Trevor Lawrence? I mean, even Kirk Cousins. I would take Matthew Stafford if he's healthy. I'm easily taking T. Law and Stafford over Herbert. I yeah, I I have a I struggle a lot with Herbert. In redraft, I think that I don't disagree. I think he's tremendously talented. I just there's so I, I don't think we've ever seen or can project more of a change in the way that they're going to run things, the weapons he has. Like it's just I it's just, a lot of it's a lot of uh, so much Herbert, uncertainty Herbert, for me in a one quarterback. I just rather I think go it's with someone being else. Overblown. Dude, I, just, I, I think he's finished as like the QB 15, 16, or seventeen points per game in like each of the last two years. And now he loses his top three passing weapons. He was eight in fantasy points per game last year. He was eight? Eight. I don't think that's this is true. From player profiler. 18.6 yeah, fantasy seven, he points per game. He was 17, but... Eight. He was balling before he got hurt. Okay. But the year before, 17.1, 15. The year before that, second overall. He his, had the 5,000-yard season. What was he in points per game uh, two years ago? 2022. Uh, 15th. 15th, okay. But that's... Here's, here's my point, though. He was... Eighth overall last year with 20 passing touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Right, but you can't say yards. eighth overall and then and then look at raw stats because that's points per game. Okay, then Fair. the year before when he played, I have him I have the, him points per game. Oh, it's 2022 as quarterback 16. Yeah, yeah sorry. in 2022, uh, 25 passing touchdowns and 4,700 yards. Also, I'm as quarterback 14 played. last year. Where are you looking? FF today. I guess I got to factor out a few players. I'm looking at player profiler, so it that's just what they, they're They probably up. have a minimum floor of a certain amount of games played. But it's like you have to take out Kirk Cousins. You take out... Uh, yeah, I know player profiler del- or does pull... Kyler Murray. So you got to... Yeah. I, I get it. If, if you're worried about the Chargers, that's fine. I, I am too. Like, I don't necessarily think it's all going to be sunshine and rainbows. But, like, I think he, as much as you want to run the football, this is the... F and NFL, like you have to compete, you have to throw the football, and you have to keep up in this high scoring league where they're not going to be, they don't have a good defense. They don't necessarily, they can't rely on just running the ball out the rest of the game. Like, I think he's going to have to throw. Whether or not he has the weapons that can do it, I don't know. But at QB 16, like, I think he's more likely to finish at QB 16 than he is QB 8. Like, I think this is way more likely. Like, I think this is a round where he's finished the last couple of years pretty much, like, points per game, and then you make all the changes that none of them are positive towards Herbert having more volume or I just don't – for me, I don't see – I can't see Herbert finishing, like, 20. What, like, yeah, I was actually going to ask, would you guys be shocked I, 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 if he finished say, at, like, quarterback 18 or 20? Not year? at all. I have him as my quarterback 18, I think. Yeah. 
this, this is this I feel is like the, the floor for me. Like this is where I think right, it'd right. Be but the, the question to ask is not like whether or not it's a floor. It's like how likely is it going to happen? And I would say like I think his floor is about quarterback eighteen, but I would still put it at like a seventy percent chance he finishes from quarterback fourteen to eighteen. I because here's the thing. I actually agree. I think we agree on his floor being in this range. I agree with that. My thing is, if I look at the guys going later, if things break right for Kirk Cousins, I think he could actually be a top twelve quarterback this year. I think Matthew Stafford's shown us that he could be a top. 10 quarterback. Like, I'm not going to get crazy with Rodgers, but I, I guess I feel like there's other quarterbacks that offer a similar floor, but maybe a little bit higher upside. That's kind of, I think, my problem with Herbert. In the, and in a one quarterback format, I, if it was a super flex format, I'd be like, all right, let me get Herbert as my quarterback too as a floor. I would 100% agree. Like, if I'm drafting a quarterback here, I'd rather have swing on an upside personally. Yeah, and, and I guess like going off the point of the coaching staff, it's like, yeah, sure, they have to throw the ball if they want to compete in the NFL. But I like, agree with that point too. They had the – they had – you know, their their top 10 pick, and rather than taking Malik Neighbors to build around Herbert, they said, we're going to take Joe Alks. We want to build the offense that we want to, and that tells me they're – They said they view him as a weapon, too, which is wild. That – Joel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so maybe some – maybe 900-yard well, receiver comes in the form of Joe oh, Alks. Yeah. Yeah, but Sick. you could also argue that the addition of Joe Alks is going to help Joe Bur- – I mean, uh, yeah. Justin Herbert as well. Sure. I just think there's, there's no weapons. He loses all his weapons. It's a run-heavy offense. It's not like it, him finishing down here is unheard of because he's done it before in, in points per game. So I think we have precedent for it. It's not like we're putting uh, Josh Allen down here or something like that. No, where we I continuously just – I don't know. I, th- I think for me, again, also part of this is just the fact that the round is so horrible and you're getting a quarterback that I guess I believe in a little bit more than you guys where I, I could see him finishing as a low-end QB1 this year. All right, so let me ask you this. Round 10, is there – a player on the board, it's like, all right, if you're going to be drafting only with the idea of you're trying to swing for upside, do you see any upside in this round? I'm actually genuinely asking um, and looking to. Well, Herbert's one of them. Um, if I'm swinging upside, the other upside play, I guess, would maybe be a quorum. I would also potentially swing upside on like a Keon Coleman. But what about? I don't believe in those guys as much as I would believe in a Justin Yeah, I don't Herbert. feel great about these guys. Maybe Chase Brown, if he works his way into a three-down workload. Yeah, I was actually going to say it, it's probably uh, – Maybe, yeah. Possibly a Chase I don't Brown. feel good about it. I, but I, like, I think Keon probably has the upside swing. I'm just not confident that we know when that happens, and it, I, don't, I don't love rostering a receiver that long. And, again, that just kind of furthers me saying, like, just give me Herbert here. Like, I, if I don't want any of these running backs and wide receivers, I will load up on running backs and wide receivers and tight ends early, and then here in the 10th round I'll just take Justin Herbert and roll with it. I, I don't hate the point you're making. I, I personally would be I, just taking – a guy like Jerome Ford uh, ahead of ADP. I'd be taking Kirk Cousins yeah. straight up ahead of him. That's right. Like, that's kind of where I'm at. But I, I get what you're saying. That's fair. All right. Nice. Nice. Let us know. Healthy Justin. Let Herb's us know. Herbert debate. or nah? Definitely. The answer is nah. More Nas than there is. It's all right. The narrative has been pushed pretty far, so I think there's some people pushing back against it now. So maybe we'll have some. So some cones in your corner. I actually some cones, yeah. Uh-huh. I actually was in the where at first I was like, yeah, we need to start kind of fading Justin Herbert. But then it, it got to a point for me where it was like, okay, now we're kind of fading too much. And so now I'm, I've kind of switched sides in this debate. So we'll see. We love y'all. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe. And like I said, the pre-order discounted price for the draft guide is up on bdge.co right now. Co- Underdog Fantasy, co BDGE. We'll get it done as well for a cheaper Rice, and uh, we'll see you next time. And that's where Herbert's really low. Love you.